Welcome everyone to the final update regarding the Sony MP3 player. I show you the reassemble and battery install after this introduction, if you want to see that. What I first wanted to mention for everyone else is, of course many of you probably know that those Sony devices were not the most successful, most likely because of the DRM, the annoying digital write management, that those devices implemented. And back in the day on Windows you needed the Sonic Stage software to transfer files that managed all the writes, whether you allowed to do that and such, which all of was already highly uncomfortable and annoying as it was, but additionally there was also some rootkit which made the whole thing even less popular. Uh, you see here some hits, I don't quite remember all the details, whatever. So I even read that some Windows users had problems installing the Sonic stage probably because of this backdoored uh, system hooking DRM DLL stuff on new Windows versions like 10 or even 8 or maybe even 7 or whatever it was. Anyway, I would not want to deal with the Sonic stage anyway, so I found there is some open source program, J Symphonic, and unfortunately it's a little bit up and done, so it was not updated in the last five or so years, and also it's written in Java, which I am personally not the greatest fan of. Usually I don't even have Java on my systems. To my surprise, I just downloaded here some JDK1 something tarball, some JDK 7U55 Linux x64 compressed tar. I just unpacked it here into my opt folder and it indeed works, surprisingly. So you just run this with Java this jar J Symphonic version 03002 Freedom. While I'm surprised and thankful that it works, the first strange thing is that somehow it doesn't have a registered window class here, but whatever. And so I just mounted this storage device here to Meteor NWS 205 and this J Symphonic really works. So I just transferred here a couple of files on this player and this indeed works. It's forking off FFmpeg to transcode flag and such to mp3 and I set here 320 kilobits for the bitrate and I already test listened the first ones and actually this nice little player sounds surprisingly well, not really much to complain. Uh, has quite some bass and the highs are also okay-ish. Obviously high-end decks nowadays sound better, but not really something that I would immediately point out to be lacking. Need to be careful not to move it so much so because this USB connector is slightly fragile. You can Click here, import, export, delete and apply the changes. So the transfer only happens, so you click here all the stuff together and it's only executed once you hit this save thing. Yeah, so much to that. As I said in the first video, quite nice player, including step counter and calorie measurement stuff for running. And it even includes an FM tuner, not that I would usually be such a great fan of an FM tuner, but while running and such, maybe nice to have as long as those radio stations are still broadcasting. Of course this old and faded display is not the most readable, but in my opinion at least nice that I could save the display at all and this unit is fully working with a new battery and certainly better than throwing it away. I'm sure I will find someone who still wants to run with it or even have it as backup player or while traveling or such. I quite like this design. And now I show you the reassemble and battery install. I hope you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to share, like and subscribe. Now I ordered yesterday at 7 a replacement battery and it already arrived. I think this is the fastest delivery ever, but I probably was just lucky. Probably they were just at the post office or something that this already arrived. So this was like 10 euro or so. Unfortunately, what I already wondered when I ordered it, I realized it has slightly less milliamps. This is rated 100 milliamp hours. The original was 116 and unfortunately it's also slightly smaller so maybe this is new manufacturing technique now 10 years later but I would have preferred if they would have manufactured a slightly larger one to have longer lifetime and such that is a little bit unfortunate but that is what you get when you order third party replacement things on eBay a decade after 
the device. So let's try to get it in here before I lose any of these parts here. This battery connector here, this original that I kept. Is this really the same one? Okay, at least this looks similar. By the way, I would often seen this one. Really funny, directly cable pressed, small thing. So this was glued inside here. So that was on here. Actually, you need to be careful. So this one was positive on the right. And if I would directly... This is a little bit strange. That positive... In a way they have cramped this here on the wrong side, I would say. Because then you need to snap it here reverse with the cable going into the wrong direction. So always watch carefully what you install. At least I hope it is positive. You never know with this shiny stuff. So now I need to remember where all the pieces go. So it was slightly difficult to get this PCB fully in there. Apparently it goes some quite good 5 millimeters or so in there. Everything not the easiest puzzle to get back together. Then the tape that we saved. And it does still work. This is very much faded display. Let's squeeze in the battery. So next I temporarily took it off again due to uh, squeezing in this PCB there, which didn't go in as smoothly as I thought it would. And obviously I did not want it to rip the display cables pressing around there. So of course the battery has no voltage. I wonder how long it was laying there in the shop. So I will just charge a little bit with this lab power supply. However, this cheap Conrad thing, I, the minimum current limit is apparently 150 milliampere. But apparently it can't even limit it so much. Here you see it's at 200 milliamp, so much to this lowest current limiting setting. So battery slightly pre-charged there with the lab power supply and it indeed really works. I hope charging also works then. But the most annoying thing was really indeed that this battery connector has a cable crimped on from the other side than the original. The original plugged with the cables from this side so this was really annoying. This took way longer than it should to get this battery plugged in there. Followed by the second annoying thing that obviously the battery is much smaller. It is really a pity as it only has a little less capacity. I would really much prefer if this third party aftermarket vendors would use a chance to build a higher capacity battery on the same size and not a smaller one in less size. That is what it is. So then this case slides over there again. Oops, did I pull this now? What did this? Oh, this was in the USB port there. Hmm. Need to be careful though here with this button that was somewhere in there. There is a window. Need to be very careful with the flex cables, obviously. This it's a little bit tighter than I would want. Um, by the way, did we hit? Where is our, did we not hit here some plastic thing screwed in there? Wait a second. Right, I pressed this already on here. This was of course off. So this is how it goes. Slow and steady. There's also various display flex cables, battery and such. Back in we have it. Now there were three screws. I wonder were they all the same? Not that we get long 
screw damage apparently really listed here maybe they are the same if they don't for the right or something actually this looks different so much for being the same screws let's put that one there the other matching bigger one there so this window we just leave a little adhesive residue there and uh, so I will not really use it on a daily basis the only thing is we need to get this thing in there there's just nothing I wonder if I should have but I let this nose thing in there when I pulled it out, but that's what it is now. Actually, maybe we should follow the instructions more closely. So first of all, because instructions, as I said in the very beginning of the first video, the service manual starts with this here. Also, as this piece just fell off, that was this ledge here. It's a corner of the USB port, actually, I think. Maybe not the very easiest to... It's this plastic thing back in there. Yeah, just like this. And then in here. And then this retaining clip thing. And back together. And it is also charging. Obviously you can see why I changed the displays. It's barely seeable behind this polarizing window glassing but the battery is charging without battery set full it's a bit strange to me but whatever then the faded display set it's fully working let's put the last screw here and then I guess we want to find a way to put music on there without sonic stage obviously I hope you also enjoyed the final update here on top of the mini disc repair and don't forget to share, like and subscribe and I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come.